but I told him she could talk, so I <laughs> shut it down. No, love her, but ooh. Cool. Uh, skip forward just a hair. <laughs> Great. Yep, and go ahead, look straight into the lens for me. Puppies. <laughs> All right, Joey, you ready to get started? I'm ready. Um, where do you want me to start? With my diagnosis? Um, actually, I think we should just tell your entire life story from the beginning. My whole life story. Yeah. All right, let's go. My mother said I never crawled. I just started running. I was a born daredevil. My prized possession was a yellow handled big wheel bike that I crashed into every wall of the apartment. Like I said, Daredevil. I had the biggest dreams as any other five-year-old being a news anchor. Hi, this is Action News. Hi, this is Action News. This is Nicole Kidd. We're putting Action News. Isn't that adorable? Thank you. Bye. Bye. So it was 1973. I was growing up in North Jersey. Blue 42. Blue 42. I was short, the big. I loved football. And my friends gave me this awesome nickname, Round Man. I loved sports, but we didn't have much money. So I had a hand-me-down bat, I had a hand-me-down baseball glove, and a hand-me-down Mr. Hoover Brooks Robinson jersey that I never took off. We were a big, traditional Italian-American family, which meant rigatoni, lasagna, big ziti, eggplant farm, and spaghetti. And of course, always with homemade meatballs. When I was about 12 years old, I decided that in the middle of the night, I was gonna take the car out drive it around for a while. So I had never driven a car before. About 4 a.m., we get pulled over by a policeman. Comes up to the car, shines in his flashlight, looks at me, and shakes his head and says, how old are you? I just gotta look up at him and I say, 12. And the cop says, oh man. 1979, I don't wanna brag, I was 11 years old, and our team was the Maryland State Champion Duck Pin team, age 11 to 12. Yes! And in 1983, the Orioles finally did it. A liner and the Orioles are the world. But by then, it was Orioles who? That summer, I was 15 years old. It was all about Madonna, 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 Madonna. I always wanted to be an extra in a movie. And in 2002, I finally got my big break in Kevin Smith's movie, Jersey Girl. Hi, Ben. I get a scholarship to play soccer at American University. And that's where I fell in love with film. Now I know what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. In 1996, I shocked and surprised my family by starting my own business, one of Baltimore's first dog walking companies. In 2002, I gave birth to my son, Cole, who is the most amazing being on the face of the earth. In 2011, I married the love of my life, Lisa Gilda. At 25, I finally met a cute boy at the Jersey Shore. I passed the state exam and received my teaching certification. And at 29, I tied the knot with the boy of my dreams. Hi, Matt. So I met this beautiful girl at a California wedding named Elika, and I decided to marry her. And the next year, we have this incredible baby boy. When I'm traveling for work, I do my best to take my family with me wherever I go. And Leo is so small that when you take the photo for the passport, it's a photo of his entire body. Alpine Elika, they're coming through. To the glacier. I think it's about late 2007. With Elika, it wasn't excruciating pain. It was more subtle than that. I have a, a very slight memory of just being in the doctor's office and not being able to say anything. I was um, in the best shape of my life. I ended up in the emergency room at a local hospital where they said it's probably just colitis. Here's some antibiotics and go home. And the following week, when they did the colonoscopy, the mass was so large they couldn't get past it. My wife, Lisa, and the doctor were next to me, and the minute I woke up, I knew it wasn't good because I could see the look on her face. I knew that there always was a risk for colon cancer. I just never thought it would happen so young. There was also so many wheels turning about what's gonna happen to me after today. I felt like it was important to share my story with the world. So this whole thing ignited a fire inside of me. I knew my story had to be shared, raising awareness and helping others. And I'd begun volunteering with Colorectal Cancer Alliance 
and I'm really excited about it. Through my online research, I found Colorectal Cancer Alliance, and I immediately liked what they stood for. The Alliance wants to see colorectal cancer end in our lifetime. I feel that if I help others in their journey with cancer, then I will feel fulfilled and that I have done my job if I can make a difference with my story for even one person. When I was diagnosed, the first thing I did was actually reach out to the Alliance. The best piece of advice I ever got was go on to Blue Hope Nation, talk to your peers and get the answers from them. When you're the caregiver, you are scrambling and scrambling around to find solutions. The Alliance is, is incredibly valuable because it helps people who are having trouble navigating what to do, how to do it, and then how to stay healthy afterwards, too. We as survivors, I think, have been given an opportunity to educate. We really are a nation of allies. Thousands and thousands of people from all over the world who have navigated this path, who have been through this, from stage one all the way up through stage four. The Undy Walk in Philadelphia today was a great event. People can walk in the rain. That's nothing compared to what some of us have been through. I think this is really important to the colorectal community because we are able to come together to raise awareness hear survivor stories, provide a sense of hope and motivation for people that are newly diagnosed or are still going through their journey with cancer. And I'm a living example of how this can affect somebody that's young. So it's really important for me to spread that word. My kids are a direct reflection of their mother. I see so much of Elika in them. It was about 10 years ago when Elika passed away I don't want anybody ever to have to do that. So it's important to me that there's something like the Alliance. It makes me feel like I'm keeping her memory alive in being involved with the Alliance and not just sitting around and doing nothing. From the minute you were diagnosed, you were never the same person as you were before. I say it's my second chance at life. This is my opportunity to give back to the world in a way that can really help and benefit others. And for me, doing it through the Alliance is where I get the greatest joy.